right. Um, you guys can hear me at the back. You can understand my accent. Okay. No problem. Very nice. Okay. I'll speak softly and slowly, and it's going to be a long, boring session. <laughs> so, um, uh, my name is Anubhav, and uh, with me is Tanya. Um, I manage Adobe Illustrator's product management team. My job is to figure out how to make Illustrator better for you guys. And uh, I work closely with the engineering team to get that done. And Tanya and I fight a lot because she is the designer on Illustrator, right? So she designs all of our UI. So she wants, she has grand plans. And then I come in and chip away at them very, very slowly. So there is a lot of, uh, I have, if I've disappointed anybody more than my parents, <laughs> it's, it's Tanya. So uh, it's, a, it's a great year for Illustrator. I wanted to make sure that uh, not only do we show you all the cool things that we've been up to, but we also go a little bit behind the scenes and tell you what the product team has been up to, how did we make some of the decisions that we made, and what are our plans for the, the coming year. Is that OK? OK, great. And I'm ha I will have 10 minutes for questions, and I will repeat your questions and, and answer them at the end. And uh, Tanya and I will stay back here at the end of the session to take any one-on-one -on -one questions, because a lot of you have personal, deep personal issues that you don't want to discuss publicly <laughs> with Illustrator, and we are happy to, to provide that, that support. Uh, we also have some t-shirts to give away, so take one for yourself. Take one for your friend, but be nice. And uh, so let's let's keep going. So um, our, our agenda is to talk about what is our plan for this. Uh, how did we end up where we ended up uh, at Max 2019? What do we plan to do for next year? And uh, then talk about Illustrator on the iPad. So over the last year, we've been busy making Illustrator better. Now this is a, a loaded statement. Uh, I want to say by better I mean really making sure that we meet the needs of people who are using Illustrator today, right? So we've gone back to the fundamentals. We have focused on stability. We have focused on performance. And we have picked up items that you guys have voted high up on our Illustrator user voice page. How many of you know that we have a user voice page? Please raise your hand. So not very many of you. So if you want to influence Illustrator, we have a channel that we use now to channel all of the input and feature requests that we get from our community. And that is our user voice page. So it is illustrator.uservoice.com. Please go to our user voice page, tell us how we suck, and we will stop sucking. Right? <laughs> uh, and uh, people give us a lot of grief on that forum, but I think it comes from a, from, a, from a nice place. And it really, you know, folks like you that help us make Illustrator better for, for all of you, right? So all through 2019, our focus was not on adding new things, not on changing defaults, right? Not on changing things that are working well for you just because we think they can work better for you. So our idea was not to do any of that this year, but really go back and, and focus on the fundamentals. So we have we are on this journey of doing a series of customer happiness releases. So we had a release in October, we had a release at Max, and then we're gonna have a couple of more releases early next year to make sure that we start addressing some of the things that we are hearing from you at a faster pace than we have before, right? So look, uh, look for Illustrator updates coming to a desktop near you uh, and, and accept those because some of the, the most asked for bug fixes and feature requests will be addressed um, there. And we have fixed 79 of these uh, bugs and feature requests already. Uh, and when we talk about fitter, happier, more productive, not to not, you're right, right. Some of you get the reference. Smart people. Uh, they, uh, we, we've really focused on productivity and, and file save, making sure that you guys are able to save your files faster, get back to the work, uh, and 
If you're working on a network, some of you are working with SMB clients or in studio environments where you're saving stuff to the network, there are a bunch of issues that were causing file corruptions and, and memory issues. So we've gone ahead and, and fixed those. And we'd love to hear from you if you are still running into issues. Um, we have a long list of issues that we have fixed. right? And I can't go through each and every one of them, but we will go through some of them because uh, we know they were uh, deeply painful. They caused a lot of hurt, and uh, we, we want to make sure we uh, we acknowledge that and apologize for that, and and make sure that we we you know hold ourselves to a higher standard as we as we keep developing the product. And the entire list of issues, if you really want to get into the weeds, are on our uh, help X pages, uh, and you can go and, and and take a look and see if we have not fixed a bug that is causing you pain. Please. Please let us know. You, we, I'll give you my, my business card and uh, my mom's number, and, uh, and we will get this, this sorted out. So with that, let's get uh, out of slide mode. And I'm going to have Tanya, who's the lead designer on Illustrator, talk about some of the things that we've been up to. Fair? Cool. Yeah. Hi. Can everyone hear me well? Good. So thanks, Anubha, for an awesome introduction. I'm not so Hitler, as Harvey <laughs> claims. But um, it's wonderful to show you guys what we've been up to. Uh, just let's get our hands dirty and dive into it. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is something very, as a designer, we do it very often. We create a path. We may or may not have some style on it, but in this case, I've added variable width to it. So you can see it started with four anchor points. And as soon as I do expand, it ends up with, well, my maths is not that strong, so I'll take help of the document info panel and let me switch to the objects. Oh yes, from four I went to 101 which is amazing. And same thing is what we kind of realize when we do similar operations, like we outline our fonts. And when we do that, again, the kind of anchor points that we receive are at times quite painful to work with. So moving on, like, this is an interesting part of the presentation. <laughs> so just to create a single curve that we do in Illustrator, this is the maths behind it. It's hidden from our eyes, but it's pretty complicated in the background. And one of our renowned principal scientists actually worked very hard to make sure that he optimized this equation and give you a result with lesser number of anchor points with the exact precision that you started with. To show that, let me just move on to an artwork which one of my colleagues created. It's a very simple artwork, doesn't look complicated. And when I received it, I was, I was in- Has this happened to you guys? Like you, yes? Right. I couldn't really describe my emotions, and <laughs> I didn't know if I should shout at that person or ask Anubhav to fire him, but neither of that couldn't happen, and because I have this OCD, I had to do something about it. And traditionally, if we would have done this, I would have gone to remove uh, delete anchor point tool and manually remove each anchor point. And while I'm yourself. doing it, you should have done it yourself. Oh yeah, I could have like recreated <laughs> myself. That's the easiest way. But at times, it gets tedious. It takes you hours and hours to do this, and you need a lot of patience. You need a lot of coffee, and you need to be just calm when you're doing this. So let's see what we can do with this and not get into all of that trouble. So now that we know that, I'm not sure if you guys are aware that there is certain operations that you can do on path. And one of them, if you go down the list, 
is called Simplify. It's been there. Uh, I'm not, sh can you guys show with a show of hands, tell me that if you've used this before? How many of you find this useful? Some of you do, right? Wow. Okay, I wasn't anticipating that. <laughs> <laughs> so, with the newer update, what we've done is we've improved the experience and as well as the output of this operation. So when you click on Simplify Now, it automatically removes the anchor points. And in doing so, you can see I'm able to pan and zoom and there is this newer control which appears on screen and it's like a floating widget and it starts with an auto simplified form. I have the option and it has a simple slider and I can reduce it further and you can see that the number of points are getting reduced with that notification or I can have the maximum precision, but it will never be the original number. It will always give you the most optimized geometry of your original path. In doing so, I am able to pan and zoom, see if it has distorted any part of my path. And if I'm not, if I'm keen to see even more advanced controls, if I'm not happy with this output, I can select the more options and for people who've seen this dialogue before, it has a more informative UI now. You have two sliders, which is one is for the precision, you can reduce or increase, you can change the smoothness and again select auto simplify, which goes back to what we had recommended in the first place. You have the older controls as well, like you can see the show original, and you can see that the auto simplified actually matches closely to your original path. Let's undo this. So this is just one part of it. The next part is even more exciting for me to show you. So right now you saw that I've selected the whole path. It actually works on a portion as well. So if I have, for example, selected just these anchor points, let me just zoom in a little further. Oops. Um, let me pick up a portion which is more crowded. Okay, so this is there. The new thing is that I don't have to again go back to object, path, simplify. We've added a contextual control. You can right click here and you see simplify. You can click on it and it magically removes those anchor points. So it's, it works on multiple paths. It works on a single path. It works on a portion of your path. And to show further the power of it, like I mentioned that we do this operation very often on a type which is outlined. And imagine tweaking this form further. We can select this, I can quickly do simplify, and you can see the fidelity of the curve, it honored it, and now it's easier for you to manipulate and go ahead. Is it helpful, guys? Thank you. So being a pain to him has its advantages, and this is one of them. Yeah, we thought a lot about this, by the way. She, she really wanted the, the ability to pan and zoom on the output while simplifying the path. Yeah. And the engineering team was saying, no, that, you know, can we just give them a, a modal dialogue, just one dialogue, so that designers can just do it once. And she fought for it, and she got it. So I hope you, you, you find it useful. Thank you. So, are you done with this? Because there is a hidden feature that nobody knows about. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, so let me show you just, uh, you can see my screen now. So, um, there is one other thing in path simplification. So, I have, I have this shape selected. I'm just going to select the direct uh, anchor point tool, uh, sorry, direct selection tool, which is the A key. 
and I see that I have a bunch of extra points on the circle that don't need to be there, really, right? And my anchor points are bigger than her anchor points. How many of you are having trouble looking at small anchor points, right? So you guys should know that there is a, a way to change that, and I've turned my anchor point size to the max in the preferences. <laughs> so if, if you guys like uh, larger anchor points, you should you have that uh, ability to, to change this. So if I were to delete, uh, select the single anchor point and delete it, right, this is what happens, right? I get an open path. Or I can select uh, the, the minus tool and delete it, and it tries to, and, and I get a reasonable, actually a pretty crappy approximation of that curve, right? <laughs> so um, when we got this algorithm sorted out, one of uh, our principal scientists said, you know, we could use this to delete a point also. So I said, well, that would be nice, how would it work? So he said, well, you tell me where do you want to put it? So we, we said, we don't have time, we have to ship. So he said, okay, I'm just gonna put it somewhere and you can tell a few people and they'll tell other people. So I'm telling you, you're the few and you can tell other people. So there is a, you know about the minus key shortcut to remove an anchor point, right? So it's hidden in the pen tool, it's called the delete anchor point tool, right? How many of you know about this tool? Great. So now if I hold the shift key down and I click on this this point, it just goes away, right? So nobody knows this and nobody knows this because we just ran out of time to give this a better UI, but it's there, it's there for, for, for those of you who know, so it's a, a modifier in the delete anchor point too. Okay, on to, on to the next feature. You always take away my thunder. <laughs> So moving on, next one is one of our favorites and I think you guys will all sympathize and be happy to have it. English is not my first language and I'm sure people whose its first language is also make spelling mistakes like me. No surprise there. How many of you know there is a spell check in Illustrator? <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> right. And do you it's, know how fun it the, is to work with? It's the shrug emoji, right? It's like, <laughs> really? Like, yeah. so, so it is there, but we hid it. Yeah, and it's the best, and it's so much fun to work with it. So <laughs> in order to do the way Illustrator does spell check, there are two ways. Either you can go to edit, spelling, spell check, which is the shortcut is command I. And we have this fun little UI that we've been looking at for, I don't know, ages. And it's so much fun to keep on looking at next, 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 next. And imagine if you have so many art booths with so much of content, if you're creating a brochure, if you're creating a document in Illustrator, this is not the best way to go about. So for that, this year, we did something more fun. So now, when you are on edit, spellings, there is something called auto spell check. You just have to turn that on and you will see all your mistakes right on your canvas or artboard. Not only that, you can act, it works on all type operations that we have, whether it's type on path or it's touch type. Whatever it is, wherever you've used it, it'll start showing up and it'll show in all your documents. And also while you're typing, it will start telling you that you have made a spelling mistake. And it honors all your How settings. many languages does it support? It supports, supports 50 languages right now, uh, except East Asian language and it works on all viewing, uh, editable viewing modes, which is your, um, your other, uh, except your outline mode. Uh, for now, we are still working on the outline mode and presentation mode, of course, is a non-editable mode. I'm not sure how many of you guys know we have presentation mode. I'll show wow. that, you don't show that. Let me take some No, no, right no, now. no, that. Oh, okay, cool, so fine, I'll, I'll keep something for him. Thank you. <laughs> So moving on, like I said, we have these highlighted errors. You can right click and see the suggested 
spellings as well. Because we only support 50 languages, this special one requires its own one. And hopefully one day we'll support that as well. But for now, let's just say he meant coffee and move along. <laughs> I love him. You do? Oh, yeah, sorry. I love him for... Let's not go there. For Let's the content go. that he gives no, no, us. No, we are being recorded. Let's go. <laughs> Moving on. Let's go on to something more interesting. How many of you actually create icons and smaller logos and everything in Illustrator? Nice. So what we've observed when you are an icon designer, uh, typically, you will have individual artboards along in each icon that you've designed, and then you create a bigger artboard just as a sticker sheet to be able to export. How many of you actually know the asset export panel that we have? Yeah, not that many. That's interesting. I have something to show you then. So there is something called asset export panel, which looks like this in Illustrator, and it is linked to your export for screens workflow. So when you do, in this case, I can select all my, it's, it's one artboard, and I'm selecting all of these icons. Notice that I've got these two actions. The first one, when you click, let me just zoom out. It creates a sticker sheet. The other one, when I click, it automatically creates individual icons for me. The, the best part is that if you have grouped your icons in a proper hierarchy, this is honored throughout. And when you do that, you can add the scales that you want to export it with. You can go to your export for screens options just to gl glance through all the assets that you've added. And the minute you do click on export assets, observe that there is no progress bar anymore because we've done it all in the background for you. So asset export now runs in background for formats like PNG and JPEG, and we're working on other formats coming soon. Yeah, so no more coffee breaks for yes. anybody. No right? more coffee breaks, it you happens so quickly. can't walk away if you are exporting. Yes, it will happen so quickly that you won't even know it's happened, and you can continue working in case it is happening in the background. So it's not going to stop you anymore. Done? Yes. Okay, so let me show you a couple of other things. So uh, a lot of other things are moving to the background in Illustrator so that you are unblocked and that we have a lesser number of blocking operations in Illustrator. So before I uh, do that, I wanted to show you a few more uh, view modes in Illustrator. So first is the trim view, which has been you know long asked for. So now uh, with the trim view, I do not see anything that doesn't belong on the artboard, so uh, that, that's very useful. The second one is, oh, thank you so much. And the second one is presentation mode. Um, the, I, why are you staring on my screen? Like, you don't like my art? Um, she doesn't like my art. She keeps uh, criticizing my art. So you can also move to presentation mode if you just want to quickly walk somebody through a bunch of artboards that you have created in Illustrator. So uh, super useful. Uh, uh, Two super useful things. But this is a large and complicated file. Uh, I'm very proud of what I've made. Uh, required a lot of alcohol and other stimulants. Uh, and uh, all I'm doing now is selecting one object on the canvas. And when I save this file, notice that, uh, yeah, I'll just save it. Right? So now, uh, this file typically takes a long time uh, to save in uh, Illustrator's uh, 2019 version. But now, uh, I'm unblocked. I can move to a different file. I can start showing you new features while this uh, object or this file is being saved in the background. Right? So if you are saving more than one file, uh, it's just going to be added to the queue. Uh, background exports are also going to be added to the queue so that you can just keep, keep working, keep working hard. And, Never give up and never surrender. Right. <laughs> so uh, all those things are um, 
are, are useful and uh, and I hope you you like them. It took a lot of effort to get here uh, for uh, a product like Illustrator. I mean, we are on uh, our thirtieth year, so uh, I, I'm glad that this is coming to a, a desktop near you. Uh, one other thing: How many of you use symbols? I am shocked that people still don't know about symbols in Illustrator. I think it's largely our fault, uh, but uh, I will fix that one designer at a time. So. Uh, if you don't use symbols and you're working on um, any kind of um, uh, branding uh, work, right? So here I have the same, um, same logo across different collateral that I've just mocked up for a, quick, uh, uh, for a quick presentation for a client. If I select a single artboard, uh, sorry, if I select that one uh, asset and I, what is going on here? Something's going on here. Hmm, strange. Uh, weird. Never mind. Let That's me when that. Anubhav gets. How many of you know about Global Edit? Right? Do any of you know? Okay, great. So, Tanya, can you show Global yeah. Edit while I try to figure out what happened? I think he's still drunk, but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like how been, Anubhav said, right. we've been recorded. I'm sorry, we've been recorded. Please edit this. So moving on, um, Anubhav did not create a symbol and he used it in some of his sort of branding work that he does without showing his artwork to me. So when he does this, uh, any change that you want to do on this means that you have to again copy paste, repeat it multiple times wherever you've used this asset. But now we have a smarter way, even if you've not created it as a symbol, if you selected this object, there's an option called global edit, which appears. And it has certain settings. You can decide to select an object which is similar in appearance or similar in size. In this case, I'm going for similar in appearance because I've rescaled it in different, different collaterals that I've created. So when I select this, it actually highlights in my file that where all this is being used, whether it's on the canvas or whether it's on the artboard. And I can now go ahead, do some random tweaking because it's Anubhav's file. Let me go a little berserk. The Don't, way he is. That's a, what, you just made it very aggressive. Well, that's the People equation. People don't eat aggressive fish. They don't. Fine, I'll make it a... <laughs> okay. I mean, that's you. So... What? <laughs> and I can decide to probably change it to a random color. Why, is it, why are you making random decisions? Because, because, because it's, it's you. So did anything so else... So when I did that, you noticed that all the you know, copied artwork that I had, which were highlighted earlier, get updated, and I don't have to do that manual work anymore. So I think you're just encouraging bad behavior, right? Instead of letting people just declare symbols, you're just saying, it's okay, keep making copies of whatever you're working on, and we will fix it for you. So there is a time, there, there was your time, and there is my time. Wow. And... Wow. <laughs> And it's the age difference. So what? I think. <laughs> well, I'm having fun. It's fun to work on the Illustrator team, sometimes. <laughs> no hard feelings. <laughs> so okay. moving on. Last year. I'm so sorry, Anu. No, it's okay. I, know I hope not. you guys don't watch this recording later on. But um, anyways, let's go on. The next thing I wanted to tell you guys about, I'm not sure, if, did you guys um, try out our last year's freeform gradients? Wow. Oh, not enough people. Did, really? Like nobody on that side of the room? Wow. wow. Okay. So, uh, go ahead. <laughs> it's my time. So moving on. We've got three types of gradients now in Illustrator. The original one were linear and radial. This one is created using linear. And you can see how it was created back then. 
So when I click on the third type, which is to free from gradient, which is also present in your gradient panel, the third option, when I select on that, you see that there are these four dots that appear. So because we have machine learning Sensei a part of it, it identifies the form and gives you, auto suggest you certain points which is along your shape. So in this case, I can select one, I can double tap, I can give, select any color, whether it's from my swatches panel or from my RAM. Let me go a little crazy and just choose random colors. So you see that there is a gradient being created and these dots are actually movable. So the minute I start making some movements along this, it starts diffusing color. And not only that, I can actually decrease or increase the expanse of it. This is just one way of doing it. Notice that there is another option called lines. When I click on lines, I can actually create gradients along a path. And I can, again, start Assigning colors. And Assigning colors and I can still move on these parts. And I can make illustrations which are a combination of both or either. And with that, you can actually create a lot more dynamic gradients than you could have, which would have, I think people would have used gradient uh, mesh to do those sort of work and that's a painstaking work, we know that. This is because it's my time, it's easier, it's faster, it's playful, and it's fun. You don't know when to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and just to move on with this, uh, how many of you actually have tried using gradients on type? And uh, what is the typical way that you would do? Outline? Yeah. And what if you have an English like me and you misspell something and then what would you do? You would have spent hours and hours recreating that whole type all over again. And which is not, 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 what do I say? Not productive for our age and time. Sorry, Anuva. Wow, your age and time. Okay. I think we should just have a count now. <laughs> so there is a small hack in Illustrator that helps you do it. What you do is you, how many of you know appearance panel in Illustrator? Oh, wow. Yeah, we've started to, we, we are going to rename it as the awesome panel. Yes, it is the awesome panel. So there in Illustrator, so this is an editable font. I haven't done any outline or anything. I will just add a new fill. I will just assign an awesome gradient. And then even if I haven't spelt it right, I can keep on editing. That was a big spelling mistake. Yeah. <laughs> That would have prevented graduation. <laughs> Thanks. So because I have such an awesome person sitting next to me and I had a long flight here, I took some time and I made this awesome caricature. That is not me. That is I think it's not close me. enough. To, I made you young at least. Thank you for the sympathy. <laughs> you get two t-shirts. Right? <laughs> you can do the same, like I said. You can go to... You mean they can make portraits of me? Yeah, they can make portraits of you and I will next year send out <laughs> stickers. And you can do the same. You can create your own gradient, you can keep on adding it and you can... And so life type. So if you've so done a bunch of typesetting operations, uh, you know, you, they are all honored as you type in you know, more copy or you change the copy at any time. So... Was that helpful? Nice. Last year, another thing that we did, 
and we got a lot of feedback was we introduced a way to customize your toolbar. Uh, in case you haven't discovered it, there are these three dots at the bottom of your toolbar in Illustrator now. When you click on it, there is a tool list that appears. We internally call it a drawer. It's a tool drawer for us. And the tools that you want or don't want, you can keep on adding or removing from it. In this case, I've added all my tools here. If I want to remove <coughs> a single tool, I just have to drag it. Wow. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying anything anymore. I think you're doing it yourself. <laughs> so what you need to do is you can just select one tool. Uh, you can just tap on that tool and drag it and it gets removed from your toolbar. And in case you want to remove the whole group, you just have to press shift and, and drag it. The whole group get, disappears from your toolbar. And when you close this, now you, you now are you off your, anymore. you can't select anymore. <laughs> you are in the non-editable form. I think that is the change that we did from last year. Last year, somehow the editing still crept in while the drawer was closed. Now it is not. You can add and drag and, and also you can reset in case you've made a mistake. The reset option is on the top flyout. You can create a new toolbar as well so that you can have your drawing tool separate as a separate toolbar. You can have your editing tools as a separate toolbar. It depends on how you want to customize your workspace. So this is another enhancement that we've done from last year. On that note, I'll also want to tell you guys that last year we also found out and we heard a lot of feedback that when you have to do uh, free transform operations on any object, because the puppet warp tool was on the top, the minute you wanted to reach to the freeform transform tool, it used to expand automatically and you would lose your editing capabilities, which is what, I mean, I know it is quite a pain and it's undesirable. So at this, in this release, we have moved the freeform tool on the top and puppet warp tool at the bottom. So this is the level of detail at which sometimes we have to work because we don't know what we don't know. Uh, so we, we hope that you know we, the, 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 this didn't cause you a lot of pain, but hopefully, hopefully just upgrade. Yeah. What? <laughs> Stop with this. This, <laughs> this is my time to tell the world about you. You have a voodoo doll. <laughs> I'm not. Fine. We are I, out of time. We have to move okay. faster, Tanya. Okay. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to tell you guys, if you've not discovered, uh, we have the option of crop image. And what it does by default is it automatically kind of discovers the area where it finds the maximum content and gives you a suggested outline which we've heard a lot uh, from you guys that it's undesirable if you have to do a repetitive crop operation. So for that, I would want you to know that there is a setting to turn this thing off, which is enable content aware defaults. If you turn this off, and now if you crop this, it will honor your original image size. Was it? Anything that you guys ever thought was annoying to you, like it did to me? Cool. It annoyed you? Okay. And I'm so happy I, I just changed your screen. I, I'm going to present now. So how many of you have uh, worked on, um, you, you're working on some art, and by mistake, you click the perspective grid button? How many of you have done that, right? <laughs> and then everybody says, how do I turn it off? And I've switched my tool, and I have to like quit Illustrator. Maybe I have to quit my job. I have to quit my. <laughs> City, some people have, you know, never returned to their desktop. So uh, we, every year we add another way to turn this grid off, right? <laughs> so there are many ways to do this. I hope we don't hear about this again. So first is there's this really small X at the top. Do you see this? 
That's exactly right. That is what we found out. Nobody saw this, right? So if you click on this, it should go away. Uh, the second is you can just hit the escape key and it should go away. The trouble was that last year, if you switched to a different tool and you were on the perspective grid tool, it wouldn't go away. Right? It, the escape key only worked if you didn't switch to a different tool. So now escape just works. If you're even in a different tool, we will, we will uh, remove this. So hopefully you don't have to quit Illustrator, quit your job, quit. It's a simple, straightforward um, thing. Just um, oh, one other thing, uh, while I have this selected, so this is just a, a tip that if I have, um, for, uh, if you use the transform panel and you, and you wanted to select all of these, uh, the, the X value, how do you do it today, right? Most people click and drag and select all the four digit decimal numbers, right? So this is an extra operation for you. You can just click on this X button or the W button and we will select this for you, right? So that you can just get in there and, and start typing. This also is available in the character panel and also in the paragraph styles panel. So as you, if you're making any of these changes, uh, you, you just need to click here and you will get access to uh, the, the entire edit box. So hopefully this saves you time. Another thing that we heard after we incre uh, introduced the new font menu, how many of you like the new font menu that there is a visual preview? So not like, I think the room is divided, right? And it really surprised us because we thought there is, this, is, this is just the best thing since sliced bread, right? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and it would be nice to be able to see, you know, my selection and the, and, and visually be able to pick a font. I can actually see what it looks like. I don't have to go anywhere. But some people said, I, I don't want it, and I just want to turn it off. So that was one request. The other issue we were running into is, let's say you go all the way down to your you know, $10,000 font list, right? And then you select, I don't know, let's pick one. Let's say, you know, let's say Singhala, right? Wow. And good now, choice. good choice. Good choice. Yes, yes. Do not criticize my design choices. So um, now, if you go back to the font menu, you have to start again from A, right? We don't take you back to Singhala or the last selected font, and that's because we are giving you access to your most recently selected font. As you can see, other than Future, all of these are awesome, right? So the way you get around this is. Um, before I move off this menu, because this might be new for some of you, there is an even larger preview. Uh, if, if, you, if you want to see more fonts, you can reduce the size of the preview as well. So these are available to you. But let's say you hate this entirely, right? And you, you want your old Illustrator back. So you go to uh, Preferences, you go to Type, and you can say, do not enable in-menu font previews, right? That is one thing you can do. And if you are tired of us resetting the menu to A every time you are selecting a font, you can also reduce the number of recent fonts to zero. So now, if I select this font, I actually start from where I left off, right? So this is a big, uh, I've heard this from every, uh, in every customer meeting and it was about, um, it surprised me, but this is, you, you know, you guys are right. And we made a mistake, so we are fixing that. Um, just one other thing, how many of you know, uh, use the blob brush, right? Many of you do, right? So if you know, if you, you know, if you're making a bunch of blobs, they, the blobs get combined and you can make amazing art like this, right? Um, but if you- What is that? Do not guess what people draw. It could be anything, like this could mean something, like it could be a chair that, I don't know. So, uh, so now uh, these blobs got combined, right? But sometimes you don't want the blobs to combine. So just double tap on the blob brush tool. This has existed everywhere. But if you say merge only with the selected path, uh, now when you use the blob brush, if I don't have a path selected, I get two independent paths, right? So I can actually only, and now if I have this path selected and I now use the blob brush, I actually can combine these two paths. So just so you guys know that you have this uh, available is, uh, is what I wanted to accomplish in, in this demo. Sorted, anything else I wanted to cover? No, oh, you have a few more things, right? Yes. And then we'll move on to illustrate on the iPad. Uh, we have 30 minutes. Awesome. Do we have 30 minutes? Right. Keep going. Can you see her screen? No. 
Yes. Okay. I'm sure you guys work on multiple art boards, do you? Awesome. So what happened in previous version of Illustrator is like in case you are in artboard mode and you created another artboard over it, which a lot of people do. And now if I have to select artboard one, there was no way I could select it till the time I move the artboard two over it somewhere else away from it. But this time in the 2020 release, we've done the change. And now when I create another artboard, which is overlapping the artboard below it, I can now select either of the artboards. And I can move either of the artboards. So they're not, you will not run into the same trouble anymore. And just to add on to it, like how many of you know about artboard level guides here? Wow, we have Wow, one, nobody? Two. Artboard guides. The guides that only belong to an artboard. Right? Wow, we have some, nice. <laughs> but for the rest, typically in Illustrator, when you create guides, they span across your canvas. So you will see it going throughout like in infinity but there is a way if you want to have localized set of guides for just an artboard you have to go to the artboard tool now if i create a guide it will only reside in that artboard and when i exit it it will be only inside that particular artboard So you have two level of guides. One is your canvas level and one is your artboard level. And lastly, I'd like to show you guys that we have some new learn content for people who want to learn more about how to work in Illustrator. And as well as, I'm not sure, how many of you guys know there is a learn panel in Illustrator? Wow, okay, nice. It so might not be for you. Because right, you guys are, love Illustrator, I've been using it for a long time, but there are many people who are new to Illustrator, so I just want you to pass on the word that there is a learn panel and they can spend some time in it if they want to learn something from scratch. Obviously, there's a lot of learn content for Illustrator, but once you're in the product, you wanted to make sure that there was something for you to, to learn with. Fair? Yes, so you can click on the bulb icon on the top and you have your step-by-step -step tutorials here and you have your video tutorials here where we've added newer content. And for example, in this case, it in Illustrator, we can edit. So you have the video running and you can continue working. Or if any of the tutorials have a sample file, you can download immediately and work so you can learn and create side by side. Thank you. Perfect. So how many of you uh, saw the keynote? Good people, good, good, solid, good people. So uh, we spent a lot of time talking about Illustrator on the iPad, right? So I'm gonna spend the next few minutes talking about Illustrator on the iPad. If you um, wanted to know why we did it, we did it because people were asking for it, right? As soon as people heard about Photoshop on the iPad, you know, we were getting, uh, you know, tweets and mentions and emails on why, uh, what are you, when, when is Illustrator gonna be on the iPad? So, uh, Think of Illustrator on the iPad is uh, this entire project is a journey, right? We've just started and we're gonna keep making things better. And over time, we want to be wherever you need to be as a designer, right? And if you have an iPad, you can choose to use it. We do not expect you to replace your desktop with an iPad. We don't expect you to just work on the iPad. We think it is a nice additional device. If you guys choose to use it, there are certain things that it does which we are trying to take advantage of too allow you to work across devices. Uh, and I'll show you what some of those things are. Uh, we've spent a, a lot of time looking at what is the best of Illustrator, and we've tried to reimagine that for the iPad. We are not taking everything like the perspective grid with the escape key to the iPad, right? We are taking the best, and we hope to refine it, and we hope to make it really work for you so that you can be productive, you can capture your ideas, 
in, uh, in, in Illustrator on the iPad quickly and then send it to the desktop. So let's move to, to the demo. Uh, so I'm gonna connect my iPad and the rest of the demo is gonna be on this device. Uh, don't see my, don't see my text. Now you know my passcode also. Um, so the first thing I wanted to show you was that uh, this is uh, a complicated file. I'm just gonna show you that in the outline mode it has a, a ton of, uh, a, a ton of paths. Oh, by and the we, way, it does have an outline mode. Right, we do have an outline mode. So, and we've worked a lot on the performance uh, to make sure that you can zoom and pan and do, and open your desktop artwork on the iPad if you wanted to make an edit, if you wanted to show it to a client, if you just wanted to, uh, make small changes, you know, we have, we have all of that for you, right? Uh, but we also have artboards. We've spent a lot of time making sure that uh, while what you're seeing is a very limited set of tools, our guiding principle was can we do 80% of what Illustrator does in 20% of the tools? Now you can argue, is it 60, is it 40? But our idea was try to simplify, modernize, and try to take the best of Illustrator and try to make it better, right? So let me give you an example. So here uh, I have a, a lovely blank artboard and uh, people love uh, the iconic pen tool in Illustrator, right? Um, so the first thing we wanted to do was to give you the ability to work with paths. So you have access to Bezier handles and we have invisible modifiers to help you do more with handles. For example, if I put a single key down, I can break the tangent, right? If I put, um, uh, both keys down, I can move the point around, which is like the space bar with the pen tool. I don't know how many of you do that. And I can let go and I can keep working on, on the shape that I've drawn. I can drop points and I can close out my path. You can also double tap on any point to switch between a corner point and a, uh, a smooth point, right? One ability that is not on, sit on the iPad is to select a handle and retract it, right? So you would have to move it all the way back if you wanted to retract this handle, but on the iPad you can just select it and delete it, right? It's as simple as that. So now that I've deleted this point, if I wanted to bring it back, I can put you know, both my fingers down and I can grow both these handles together, right? Again, this is something that people have been wanting to do on the desktop and uh, we, we've tried to do that first on the iPad. Now, this doesn't mean that we will not bring any of this to the iPad or to the desktop. All it means is, the iPad team is putting pressure on the desktop team to bring some of these things to, to the desktop. But they have the ability to move faster than the desktop because we have 30 different workflows to support and they, they are not supporting those right now. So we just wanted to make sure that we give them the liberty to reimagine what Illustrator could be. This is once in a lifetime opportunity for us at Adobe to completely reimagine what vector editing and path editing could be on the iPad. Now, it's easy for me to add points. I can just select the pen tool. I can add points wherever I want. And if I add a point and I don't like where it is, I can easily put both fingers down and move that point anywhere on the path, right? So this happens a lot. Sometimes you put a point somewhere, but you really need it elsewhere. And you can see as I drag this point between two other points, both the handles are, um, are responding to it. But sometimes you, you don't need a point, so just like Illustrator on the iPad, you can delete it, but that changes the, uh, the path. Uh, so instead of uh, you know, uh, using the, the, the trash can, I can select this point and I can use this key above, it, uh, this uh, quick action above it to just delete that point and I keep my curve. And uh, again, the idea behind all of this was to make sure that you as a designer have uh, more control over paths because that's what Illustrator is all about, is to give you access to. So is this just like the path simplifier? Then? Yeah, it's like path simplification uh, for uh, on, on the iPad. And again, um, we use fill and stroke proxy switches, shift X uh, many times, right? So you can just tap and drag to switch between the fill and the stroke of the object on the left hand side. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. So it's easy for me to, to do that. We also have, uh, Quick actions, uh, so let me just do sort of the first level of quick action. So the, what a common thing people do in Illustrator is to alt drag, right? To make copies of whatever they've selected. So you can put two fingers down and just, uh, you know, drag out objects and make copies of it, make as many copies as you want. You don't even have to select a, 
a different tool or you can select uh, that particular path. I'm just gonna change it to a, a fill so that you can see it on the screen and click on this point and just drag as many copies as you want, right? So fairly simple. Uh, but if I just tap on it once, it just pastes in front. So it doesn't change anything, right? Uh, and I can just move this around. I can select both these points. I can double tap to get in the weeds and get uh, and access all the anchor points uh, without having to switch to a different tool. Uh, I can also select both of them, switch the fill and stroke proxy. I can go to the, switch, uh, the quick actions dialog and if I wanted to just change the width of the stroke, I can do that directly uh, from the quick actions menu. And we did this because we know that if, if you're just ideating, you don't care whether it is 22 points or it's 23 points or 24 points. All you want to do is make sure that you can just make it look right, right? You want to work visually, you know, you are designers and I'm not, but... Um, Thank you, you for admitting that. So, as you can, you've completely... Oh! I don't know what to do anymore. No, it's okay. So, what, what should I do? Okay, so... <laughs> So let's keep going. So um, again, um, we also have transparency control similarly. So if you just wanted to change the opacity, you can, you can do this. So it's easy to you know, work visually and you know, get to where you want to get to, right? And, and you don't care if it's 85% or 95%. You can also uh, lock, you can delete objects, and all these quick actions are right here. And we got this feedback by you know, giving uh, the product to a bunch of designers such as yourselves. And they said, you know, we keep going to the left to select a tool and then to the right to select a panel. And we keep drawing these McDonald arches all the time in this product, right? So that was uh, you know, great feedback for us and we decided to implement this. Um, and let me show you just one other thing. So uh, to arrange things in Z order, right? To send something to front, something to back, you have to either uh, you know, go through the layers panel or use the keyboard shortcuts to quickly do that. But if you want to do that visually, we have a quick a Z order switch so that you can easily just drag this out to switch it, right? I think it's, this, uh, this was a horrible demo because I didn't uh, change. Let me just make it uh, excellent uh, color choice right there. So uh, now if I change the Z order, I can see, you know, I can easily send one of the, uh, the objects to the back or bring it to the front or make copies. Also, I can select these two objects and I have all my Pathfinder operations. So I can minus front, I can intersect, and all these are live. Uh, I can uh, go in and uh, I still have access to the underlying geometry if I needed to, uh, so that you can just keep it live. Now, you know that you can do this on the desktop also, right? Right? Yeah. Right? All you have to do, do you know what you have to do? You have to hold the Alt key down and click on the Pathfinder buttons. Right? And then you get a compound object. And if you think you're happy with this, uh, with how the shape has turned out, uh, you can just expand appearance or you can go in and make changes. And um, let's say you like this better than what you had earlier. Uh, you can go in on the desktop and, and, and uh, expand the appearance and you'll get you know, wherever you needed to. The other big thing that we spent time on was the pencil tool. So we have a pencil tool in Illustrator, but people are not that, uh, it's hard to draw naturally and to draw really clean curves with that. So, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time making sure that you can draw sharp things really well with the pencil tool on the iPad. So anytime I stop and wait, I get a corner point and I can easily change my path direction. I can easily keep drawing. And when I finish, just look at the number of anchor points I got. Right. This is remarkable technology. It looks very simple when you look at it, but uh, there was a lot of hard work behind it. Now, obviously, this is still a, a Bezier path. You can easily go in and, and make changes and delete points, and, and you have access to all that good stuff. You can also simplify by clicking this one button right here, and we will simplify that entire selected path for you. We can move all points to tangencies, which is really useful as you're uh, making changes and um, you, you just get you know, better results. And as you work on a smaller scale or if you're working on art that needs to be uh, you know, reduced down in size, uh, having points on tangencies is, a, is, is the right way to build 
uh, build vectors. Um, so what else can I show you? Oh, let's talk about typography. So, and I've just moved to this part uh, of the of the document. So here I have access to all my artboards. I'm just going to select this one type object, right? Uh, no, let me just select this type object. Can I select it? Oh, I'm on the uh, sorry. Delete this. Select this type object, right? So now all the same controls that we had for objects are now. Uh, contextually change to uh, be relevant to the selected object. So now I have access to changing the size of the, uh, of the typeface. I can change uh, the letter spacing and it's all visual and you know you can get it right and once you're done you can let it go. Similarly I can also change the line spacing to space out my text, give it room to breathe and um, I can make copies and send it to front and back. All those things are, uh, are there. I can also make changes to the color, right? So if I'm not happy with that color, I can switch to a different color. And I have, I, if I pull out a color, I have access to all these shades of that color so that it's easy for me to explore ideas, right? Uh, that's, all, all, that's all we are trying to do. We are not trying to get in the weeds. We are just trying to figure out, you know, can I make um, another copy? Can I make, uh, does it look the way I want it to look? And I have access to all my fonts. One of the key problems we're trying to solve is how do we get fonts on the iPad, right? Because all of you need fonts. So all your Adobe fonts are available uh, on the iPad. But font selection is much easier. I don't even have to look at uh, the font name. I can just put my stylus down and drag up or down and see what looks right. And once I'm happy with that, I can select that font and be done with it, right? So um, we also support variable fonts. Uh, we support uh, you know, simple effects. So if you wanted to add a drop shadow, all those things are uh, available to you. I can, I can also change the appearance and fill and stroke of, of these paths. Um, so we've done a bunch of work just to make sure that you know, we allow you to do the kind of work that makes sense to do on an iPad and then take it to the desktop. A couple of other things that I think you, you probably saw on the, on the demo were the, um, the work that we did to allow you to bring your sketches into the iPad and then quickly convert sketches to clean lines, right? So here is a badly taken photograph of a nicely drawn pencil sketch, right? Uh, and uh, all I need to do is to go here and enable and click on this construction guides button and we will figure out what are the underlying shapes that make up that particular logo, right? You see a lot of this on Instagram and maybe some of this is after the fact that after a logo is made, people say, oh, I did all this, but, but maybe, uh, maybe you just need help. Sometimes you want to start with a set of primitive shapes because you know that as a designer, you'll get better results if you build a logo by subtracting shapes from each other rather than trying to Draw them yourselves. Yes. When is that coming to the desktop? As soon as we can perfect it, we will bring it to the desktop. Yes. There is still a lot of work here. Uh, this is uh, based on artificial intelligence and machine learning. We are giving it a lot of training data. We are trying to make sure that we do this right. Uh, but we couldn't hold our excitement. We wanted to make sure that you know we share it with you uh, as soon as we can. So now these are all, this is a, a live object, right? So I can go in. I can make changes. Let's say I thought I was drawing a rocket ship, but I actually wanted to draw a fish, right? I, have, I can make those kind of uh, changes, right? Never guess what somebody is making. Uh, and um, let I'm me- I'm not saying anything anymore. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, so this is an even worse sketch, right? It's on dotted paper. There is a, a coffee stain on it. So we are using, um, <laughs> a lot of math behind the scenes to first figure out what is the object of interest. And once we have the object of interest, can we then give you the shape primitives that make up that object, right? So we, in this one click, we cleaned up the image, we got you the underlying geometry, and this would have been hard to do, right? First, you would probably have to go to Photoshop or you would mess with auto trace or you'd say, screw this, I'm just gonna make it myself, right? And so we, so as, as you're trying to 
explore ideas. We wanted to make sure that you know we, we get you two paths as quickly as possible because that's really the, the heart of Illustrator. So what's amazing about this technology is we also give you control over negative space, right? So if you wanted to increase the negative space in a logo, if you just wanted to make sure that you know they, this was fatter, if you were just exploring stroke widths, for example, for a logo it's to see how it would look fatter and thinner, you can do all of that without having to select eight different anchor points and then messing them and make, messing with them and making sure that if you move one handle a little bit in this direction, the other handle moves a little bit in the same direction and they're together and and you pretty much want to uh, kill yourself. Uh, and it's um, so that's what you know. We, we we wanted to save lives in this feature. Um, so so that's that. Uh, but it would be remiss of me to not talk about um, just some purely fun things, right? So uh, now again, these are, oh, thank you, Mike, yes. So here I have um, an object, I think Dipanj, oh, this still looks right, okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't, let me undo it. Otherwise, Tani is gonna not let it go. Um, right. So now if I just wanted to make a ton of copies of it, I would drag copies, I would equally place them, I would use the distribute command in Illustrator, I would mess with the align panel, I would have to search YouTube to find out how do I actually use distribute in Illustrator properly, uh, how do I specify this? Distance. The distance? Distance? Yeah, right. specify distance as well. So uh, as you know, designers are afraid of math and uh, engineers aren't. And uh, so we, we worked on this new repeat feature, right? And you can say this is inspired by XD, but I would never say that. Um, we, so, so you have access to all these kind of controls. You can uh, easily create a simple pattern. You can go in and uh, from the properties panel, uh, make this a, 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 what is this called? A half step, what, what, something like that. And, um, and you can also flip the columns, right? So one of the things we heard was, I just want to flip the columns and I want to flip the rows so you have uh, access to that. And one of the things we are experimenting with is to allow override so that even within this pattern can we blend from one object size to the other, right? So it's really messy, tricky, and uh, I, I think, uh, let me show you something simpler, right? Which is, uh, right, let me just start from a simple shape and show you how much fun this is sometimes. So with this, uh, this radial repeat button, I have access to uh, not only can I go in and increase the number of copies of an object that I'm rotating around a circle, again, I don't have to do any of the math to say 360 divided by five is what? I don't know, right? So I, I can easily repeat an object, I can change their, uh, the fill and stroke, I can double tap, uh, go in uh, to the underlying object and, and again make changes and because this is all live, so I can double tap, select this point, and as I make changes, my entire artwork is reflecting the change that I've made. I can tap out of the isolation mode and I have access to amazing art, right? Um, so all these kinds of repeats and symmetry operations allow you to be more productive on the iPad. Just a little bit more on symmetry using the pencil tool. So let's say I draw a, a shirt, right? I can, I, I can just draw half of it. I can select it, I can switch to uh, you know, a single axis symmetry mode, and I have access to just an amazing piece of apparel, right? And I can rotate this, I can double tap on it, and my axis of symmetry is also uh, changed. I can go in, get in the weeds, make a change, add a point, you know, do all that fun stuff, select this point, move it around, and then my changes are, you know, reflected on the other side. I can double tap to, I, wow, this looks... What exactly are you making? The, the, that's not allowed. Sure, thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I heard that. Thank you. I was confident and loud. Um, so, so it's so much fun to play with it, right? That's the, the one thing I wanted to get across to you, right? Um, we had uh, a few uh, press people who were playing with it, and these ladies got really into it, and they had a bunch of wine, and they wouldn't give me my iPad back for 25 minutes. So I just kept waiting, I said, can I, can I have it back? And they said, no, we're not done, this is a lot of fun. And they just, uh, they really enjoyed the pencil tool, they really enjoyed doing, um, you know, simple drawings and then, uh, you know, playing with uh, typography because you can, um, you can do all the things that you 
do with type here, right? So I can, let me just remove this. Let me show you just type once again. So I have uh, an area type object. I'm just going to double tap and, and make this, uh, let's say R, right? So I can say like this R, I can make this bigger, right? And I can go and say, you know, convert it to outline. Now I have access to the, the type object. I'm just double tapping to get to the points. I can select these points and I can move them out. And now I can put this R on something else or I can put something behind it. And pretty soon I have a, you know, something I am really proud of. You guys might not be, but, um, you know, again, it's easy for me to, you know, make these kind of changes. Can I make this change, right? No, I just want to bring this to front. Can I bring this to front, right? So, you know, now you can use Pathfinder and cut out this, uh, the, the legs of this art. Oh, that sounds really violent, but, um, you know. Can you put it on a path? Oh, right. Yes, you can put it on a path. That's a, cool. Yeah, so let's say I draw this, uh, this path. I'm very good at this, as you can see. Um, and now I just wanted to put this type object on a path. So uh, all I have to do is, you know, drag this type object and drop it on wow. a path, right? Wow. So now, I'm impressed. So now I can change where it stands from. I can just keep looking at this. There's so much fun to just look at, right? Um, I like how type moves on this object, right? And then you can make copies of it, and then you can do your own Dylan Ross cover. Do you guys know about this guy? He's an amazing, amazing artist. Uh, and all of this is is live, right? So I can I can increase the size of the type object. I can get in the uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, I can select um, the shape, and I can select any point. And as I move this point around, it's it's all live and and it's right there for you. So things that are hard are easier. Things that were tedious are fun, and uh, that's sort of the the underlying message that I wanted to. Uh, make sure you walked away with. Uh, so when is this out is the next question, right? So <laughs> we are, uh, there's a lot of work that we have to do to make this right by you. We are soliciting some uh, some people, some, some people who want to help us make this product better. So you can all sign up for the beta at the booth uh, or you can give me your card and I'll add you guys to the beta program. You can play with it a bit starting, I think, next month, and then uh, we will release it sometime next year. So uh, again, the goal is to make sure that what we're building works for you and works for the use cases for which the iPad makes sense. And uh, once we nail that, we will figure out how do we make it even better. Uh, so that's, uh, that's it for us. Uh, and we are out of time, but I'm happy to take questions. Do not forget your t-shirts. There are a bunch of t-shirts here. There is a survey that you guys can fill out and uh, I know you're gonna rate her highly, but you know, have some sympathy for me also. Uh, <laughs> and um, we're here for questions. Thank you so Thank much. You.